We have the Radiance. We have the Dyer. Got some, some decent hats on the Dyer. Check out that TA. We have an intro. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Ability Draft Analysis. With me, Carmenite. Uh, and that's it. Just me. I played Morphling this game, and I did not do all too much. Uh, the story of this game is indeed the story of Doom. But we'll get to that a little bit later. For the moment, it was a very interesting draft. Some things happened that I didn't understand. If you want to see the draft... Is this the Spirit Breaker, like, standing... On a horse? What, what am I looking at here? What is this? Fascinating. Anyway, if you want to see the draft, if you want to know how we got to where we are as this game starts, go ahead and uh, find me on Patreon. Be a link in the description. There's merchandise. There's extended content. In the meantime, looks like we've got a pretty serious ambush coming up for Bottom Rune. At least it does for a second, but now Pudge is um, leaving. Ah, uh, Pudge with the old no item start. He's debating whether or not she cares about hiding behind the trees. Doom and Io go to contest. Poison is scary. The Doom is too thick and is standing in the way. We pick up the bounty rune completely uncontested bottom. Bottom River Bounty Ruin goes to Oracle, also mostly uncontested. Ride picks up the top forest rune. And a little skirmish in the middle. Amounts to nothing. Nobody dies. Two bounty runes per team. Nothing too exciting there. Alright, let's introduce the lanes. And I will say first, myself, that I had a rough start here. Somewhere between uh, the Scorched Earth bringing consistent damage to lane and hitting me without them needing to hit me necessarily from the hooks and the oracle just harassing me with infernal blade which is very strong i had had a bad time axe goes on a merry chase here through the jungle Things that I should still be helping him. Maybe I should? I don't know. I don't feel like we were going to get him at any point, though. I never got the cooldown off wave for him. Not in time, anyway. That is a nice hook, and I am very grateful to have wave for him to get me out alive. But, uh, alas, I am burnt down. Anyway, I've got an interesting build. Uh, Waveform Call and Chemrage is an excellent trio. Uh, I feel like my Phantom Rush was pretty much a wasted pick. Not sure what else I might have taken. Find me on Patreon. Watch the draft. Tell me what you think. But, uh, I would really just love to have this build on, like, I don't know, Axe. Uh, it, it's okay. I go for some Bracers, because I just want to not be completely tinfoil, but... Tinfoil? Tissue paper? Some flimsy, useless material. Anyways, I think this is a good build and on the wrong body. So, eh, it is what it is. Speaking of good builds and on the right body, we've got Axe with uh, Rot and Counterspell. This is super strong. Um, he's opting to level up Battle Hunger and doesn't have a hood, which means when people hit him... While he's got Rot going, his health is going to disappear real fast. So, I like this build, but I feel like using the Counterspell Rot combo early game and getting that Hood of Defiance still uh, really would have been the play. I knew that hook was coming, so I dodged it. It's still quite low. On the other side of the river, on the tire, we have Oracle being annoying with Infernal Blade and being further annoying with Tether. Uh, I mean, there's not a ton to say about this build. It's a support build. It's got overcharge. I don't know, for late game, I guess. 
Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. Am I recording? I should be recording. Let's see. Uh, uh, pause recording. That means I'm recording. Great. All right. Where were we? Uh, Oracle is a support build. All right. So overcharge, I don't know. Might have been denied in the draft, but looking at False Promise, Infernal Blade, and Tether, this is just annoy the other heroes in lane with Infernal Blade. Keep your carry alive with Tether. Seems very good. Uh... This is obviously excellent in team fights. It's a, it's a solid support build. I like it. Um, we have a Terror Blade. Now, I don't know about this pick. This was his first pick in the draft. And I guess being a tanky Terror Blade that won't die could theoretically be good late game. I don't hate it. I also don't feel like it does that much for him. Um, Hook and Scorched Earth is fine. Pulling Blade is not likely to get a kill straight off Meat Hook, so I guess he's just relying on Terror Blade's excellent right click to get damage through after a hook. It's kind of a wonky build. Like I don't, I don't love it. It's not really taking advantage of Terror Blade's strength, which is his insane agility gain. Uh, I really want Terror Blade to be a right clicker, and this is kind of a weird supporty build. And he's last hitting and playing as the carry. And he's doing very well on last hits, but like, I, I'm not 100% not on this build. I'm not sure what's happening. It's good enough to kill me and push me out of lane, though. I used my waveform early. He took that opportunity to hook with an infernal blade on me. I'm pretty sure I go down here. Or if not, I'm at least forced off of the creeps again. Um, this build is absolutely garbage before I hit six. I cannot jungle. I can't sustain in lane. I don't know if I could have brought enough support items. The HP regen off a couple of racers might be enough, but really didn't feel like it was. Uh, to contest with like the continuous percent health burn of Infernal Blade. I I had a bad lane. And of course with Tether up, like we couldn't counter her ass effectively. Anyway, mid, we have Io. Oh, they got Alchemist bottom. Bottom? Top. Alchemist is top. They got Alchemist top. Oh no. Poor Alchemist. Alright. Mid lane. We have Io. With Loves of Haste only. Half health. No mana. Um, this is obviously a Rush Hand of Midas plan. And, I, I mean, with Acid Spray and Grievous Greed already all leveled up, He's, he's clearly gonna make it to Hand of Midas, you know, in what, six minutes? It's a pretty early Hand of Midas. Um, it's very greedy. I'm not sure what he's hoping to turn this into. It's a little bit supporty. And there's First Blood against Axe Bottom. But wait, didn't... Alright, now I'm very interested in what happened to Alex a minute ago. Alk died. Yeah, where's Alk? Let's... Did Alk... Did Alk just die to jungle camp? Oh man, okay, so these skeletons have this ability. Rally, which says skeletons' allies gain bonus attack damage, and they gain three bonus damage, which is not a lot, but when there's three of them, and there's five enemies there, because this is a stacked camp, you can see there is... Uh, oh, that's way too far. There is both... The pile of skeletons and the bird. Hello? Go to where I wanted to go. There we go. Yeah, there's five things hitting him. So when there's five targets and they're each getting nine bonus damage, suddenly you're looking at, you know, 45 bonus damage per hit, which is very substantial early game. So that's hilarious. Alk dies to a jungle camp. I didn't even notice that during the game. Meanwhile, we're going to see first blood bottom in a second here, and then we'll be back to where we were. Any second here. There it was. What happened to Axe? He is at half health. Can't use Rot. And just gets hooked away from the tower. Alright, well, there you go. That's that. So, Ios got his hand of Midas on Courier at, you know, six and a half minutes. 
That seems good from a farm perspective. And I guess, like, the world is kind of his oyster here. He's going to have all the gold in the world. He can farm with Acid Spray and Greeble Screed. The hand is going to give him bonus gold. This all seems great. But also, like, where do you go with this build? I guess you get an Ice Blast in every fight and drop Acid Spray every fight. But that's very much a supporty kind of role, so I'm not sure what else his plan is. We'll have to see how he itemizes. At the moment, it's just more greed, so we'll see. Uh, we have a Templar Assassin. The side Blades, which is pretty nice to have on TA. Reflection. This ability is regularly slept on and is incredibly good. Turns other heroes' right-click damage against them. Uh, against a team with squishy, high-damage agility heroes like me. This is so good. Um, dismember, sure. Whirling Death, sure. It's kind of a mixed bag of abilities, but I feel like it's pretty good. Um, dismember with the illusion from reflection attacking could be really strong. I don't know why he just didn't use dismember. I feel like that would have been a dead elk if he just used his abilities. Anyway, top lane. We have a Phantom Lancer, trying very hard to not die to creeps. He's got Meld, Refraction, Meta, and Mana Void. Mana Void's a little useless on this build. But the rest is good. I mean, Refraction and Meta can certainly hit hard. Hard enough to jungle at level 5, which I can barely do on my Morphling. Pushing the top lane, we have a very, a very abusive lane build on this Pudge. Um, I don't know why he's leveling Phantom Lance, because that costs mana and isn't his broken abusive combo. If you just level these two and run at the other heroes, there's so very little they can do about it. Uh, unless they have all of the casting power in the world, and early game, that's just not a thing. Anyway, he's got Counter Helix and Reactive Armor. Somehow, even though he had access to it, he chose to pass on Berserker's Call, so it wound up on me. Um, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> he just doesn't want the Tumblr's toy, so he leaves it there. I'm not sure if this Pudge knows how to Dota. He's got some good picks, but it, I see some other extremely sus things happening here. Bottom, we're all just running Helter Skelter as TA shows up. IO came to help, but uh, alas, that's a dead axe. Axe tells the team that we desperately need help. Bottom, I believe Alk hears him and TPs. That might not be this exact moment. But yeah, we're having a rough time. Bottom, I think it is this moment, but like, yeah, here it is. Okay, so it's long enough after. That I wasn't even sure if it was this this fight. So Axe dies, says we desperately need help bottom. Alk TP's in and then flames Axe. Saying I don't get why you would call for help and not be there. And it's just like, well, Axe was dead. Of course he's not there. You have him anyhow. Anyway. Um we have an IO top. Nope, that's not it. Who am I not talking about top? We have... We're talking about, uh, we have an Alk. We have an Alk top. Uh, Alk has an interesting build also. Um, this is another situation where this is kind of just all about how he decides to itemize. Looks like he's going Bracer Power Treads. Uh, he has a Bowling Blade, which tells me he wants to be last hitting, which... I don't know. I guess he wants gold, but like clearly Doom is the one that needs to get fat this game. So, I don't know. I'm not I'm not sure what the plan is here, but he's getting gold off of Devour. Um, if he eats an Alpha Wolf, he can get some bonus damage and crit. He's got Mana Break. Like, this is a build that really wants some items. He's got a stun and the massive Disable of Doom. Like, this build could be very strong as, like, a Shadowblade Hunter build or just as a team fighting monster with, you know, Bash and BKB and 
He has Devour, so it's not unlikely that he could get any of those things going early. But alas, most of the top farm is going to Doom, and I dare say it's a good thing. Uh, you can see the other team, despite, <laughs> despite us having both Grievel Screed and Devour, and Io having this uh, Hand of Midas already, that is a dead Morphling. What happened to me? What happened to me? Let's see, I was trying to get some farm in. Looks like I stacked a camp and was jungling, and Terror just caught me. Yep, that's what happened. I was having a rough game, so I went to jungle and got caught and died. Rip me. Anyway, I was talking about Doom. Uh, Doom has the build that this is all about, this video is all about, and... You know, we're we're losing horribly right now. We're down 5k net worth at only 4 kills. We have all the gold abilities, and we're still losing the net worth battle so badly. Um, which is interesting. So, okay, so Terror is just getting fat off of his kills bottom. Doom is out farming both Io with Grievel Screed and Alk with Devour, which is just hilarious. That just means he's crushing it on last hit stop. And while we're losing bottom, he just ignores us and keeps getting every last hit top. He's currently 63-17, so he is doing a really great job of getting all of his last hits up here. And I've got to say, this is 100% the right decision for Doom. Uh, I'm sure we were flaming him and raging and very unhappy that he wasn't saving us from this very divey play happening bo bottom where TA did just use Devour sure enough that is getting them some kills uh, my team was pretty tilted right now we were pretty tilted um, there was definitely some resentment that Doom had denied Axe his build and there's definitely some resentment that Doom is ignoring the team and staying top but also, Doom is 100 gold away from his Ags at like 13 minutes, which is a very fast Ags. And I said in the chat right about now, like, hey, we're only down six kills. If Doom can get his Ags before, you know, we end up 0-20 and start showing up to fights, we could totally turn this around. We need like two turn team fights to turn this around. So... We have enemy vision in our in our jungle. We have our enemy pressuring us. I don't know if you can see this, but nobody wanted to bite the bullet and buy wards. We spent some wards, I suppose. Am I looking at am I looking at my team? Damn. Okay, so somebody bought some wards eventually. They're top. Maybe it was Elk. Huge shout out to whoever finally decided to buy some wards. But it wasn't me. And here we go. Doom gets his Ags. And that is... That is a lot of spirits. I don't think Pudge knew what was coming. Doom just walks at him. Pudge is the first to take a swim in the River Styx. And, uh... Yeah, this game just goes nuts. Just goes nuts from here. Alk is doing his best to set up here for the Doom. Uh, Doom at the moment is still on brown boots, so it's a little bit of a struggle for him to get in position, but as soon as he gets on people, they just, just pop in the river. Um, I see that he has his combo going, and I'm like, alright, I'm having a terrible game. I'm level 5, I am all the way at the bottom of net worth. This is very, like, uncharacteristic for me. I pretty much always find a way to farm and get some gold going. And I figured if I could get six, I'd be able to farm with Chem Rage at least. But this game just I really struggled with finding space. And I am... I'm, I'm broke. I'm broke and I'm low. And uh, at this point, Doom is out of there. Since three of them have shown up for the fight. Down on Contra work. We could have more than one copy of them, right? 
34 second duration, 16 second cooldown. So assuming the mana to cast it is available, he should be able to pretty much always have three copies of himself up with just Conjure Image. And then he can get the two extra from Doppelganger. And that's when it gets very strong. You can see these you know, sets of four spirits circling him. Airblade gets caught. The river burns him down. Got Oracle and Pudge behind us, and we just can't decide which way to run. Maybe if we'd all gone this way, we'd have had a little better luck getting catches here. In the end, with a nice stun, we do get the catch. The orb hits a bunch of them. And I finally have my Ken Rage up, so I actually don't die here. And with Doom bringing the damage, suddenly we're having some good fights. They're still up 4k, but now it's 6-7. It was 0-6 a minute ago, if you remember, so... Uh, this is obviously working okay. I notice Doom never adjusts his spirit radius this game. Which, obviously, the bigger radius is good for Chase. Um, I'd be really interested to see how this works. Um, I know on melee heroes, I often like to go with the smaller radius. So they hit while I'm in melee range. And instead, Doom is just kind of dancing around outside uh, just to make sure they're in the river range. And to be fair, his right click is not a thing. He's got, you know, brown boots, one bracer, and ags, and no right click abilities. So uh, him just positioning to hit with the river is, uh, is the right decision. But I'm curious just if you adjust the radius on Doom, does it adjust the radius on all of the spirits also? I don't know. I would like to experiment with this more. So, it looks like there's pressure happening top. Looks like they're hunting for this Terror Blade. I decide to go to the party. Axe decides to come to the party. We've definitely, uh, on team, noticed that, like, Doom is... Doom is what we've got going for us, so we're all pretty much in the follow Doom around mode at this point. Now we're here. Terrorblade is somewhat wisely not engaging alone. Goes for the hook on Doom, doesn't find it. River washes over TA for a sizable chunk of damage, but no kill. We dive all the way behind the T2. This is a little sus. Out goes down. Doom gets surrounded to a three on one and ends up dying. I try to go on the Oracle. Uh, I think I got my combo off too. Like, got on Oracle. Got the call. There I come. Yeah, I got the call, got the blade mail, but uh, I just don't have the damage since I'm so under leveled. Almost got him though. And I find myself alone with my team dead behind four enemy heroes. I go down too. So now it's 8-11. And while our Doom is quite strong and very much ahead in net worth right now, it is apparent that we can't, can't play sloppy. Um, we have Vision Bottom now. That's very nice. Good ward placement, too. I really like this one. Oh, it's outside the range of both of the tower wards. Um, so I head to bottom. Doom hasn't left base yet. Looks like I'm just hoping to pick up a little easy farm. Doom comes to me. How nice. So, I kind of aggressively farm from this point. Like, when Doom has waves partway down with spirits, I'll waveform them so I get the gold. And I know that is arguably kind of rude. 
but I have much more damage potential with more items, and Doom is pretty much where he's going to be. Uh, despite that pickup on TA, I think that was a nice blinking call for me. You don't get him. Enough people got in between the Spirits and TA with the last couple waves hitting him. Didn't make it through. Like, check out these blocks. By Oracle and Fudge. Totally saved that TA. That was actually really cool. Well done, guys. I go down since four people showed up. And Doom is left running. Alk is on his way, running to support the Doom. Get that stun on the Pudge. Get that Doom on the Pudge. But alas, Doom is out of illusions, and one set of spirits in the reverse decks is not enough. He's up to two sets, that's better. He's got Doppelganger off cooldown. There it is. He drops the Doppelganger, and suddenly the river does a lot more damage. Out goes down, but Doom gets a couple kills. That's two. I believe. Here comes three. There it is. That's an ultra kill. Did I say three? Never count on stream. It was clearly four. So, this is what I noticed, is Doom does damage to towers very slowly. He went with travels, which is absolutely correct for this build. He just needs to be able to be in the right spot to hit people with his river. Ooh, we have a double damage mana burning yell. Not sure what this build is about. I feel like people sometimes follow the build orders for heroes. Because, you know, there's a suggested build order you can see. I feel like sometimes people just follow it even though they're not playing that hero. Because, like, he doesn't need a ton of mana. Falcon Blade is weird on this. He doesn't have illusions, so Diffusal Blade is just single target mana breaking for, you know, 40 mana a hit. And that's something, but it's not enough. He's against multiple targets. I feel like this build wants, like, uh, a Maelstrom. He's got the attack speed, 15, agility hero, he's got the range. Anyway, spirit build choices are happening. Doom gets blown up by the guy I was just talking trash about. Turns out, uh, Meld Refraction meta does a lot of damage regardless of the item choices. So that's a nice pickup by the PL. Meanwhile, Axe and I both will have health and mana. I'm not sure what we were doing or why we weren't there. Clearly, we are bad teammates. I do get the deny on our T2. That's cute. So, we're 23 minutes in. Doom is way ahead in net worth. Followed by their whole team. Followed by, unsurprisingly, Io, who has gone for a Glipner. I like Glipner with this build. Holds people in place so they, they're stuck standing in acid and standing in ice blast. He's already got some attack speed. Yeah, seems good. Oh, TA goes down. I wasn't watching that. Where's TA at? TA solo pushes top with no support. Gone for a desolator here. Oh, hey, it was me. Yeah, turns out, uh, Blink call with Blade Mail is strong, especially under a T2 against the squishy agility hero. Fascinating. So, they have all division in the world in our jungle bottom. We definitely know that, so we go top, where they also have all the vision in the world. Um, I don't like this vision placement. Just straight up sticking Observer Wards on hills is not a good way to use your Observer Wards. It's a great way to see your Observer Wards found and destroyed. There are a bunch of good high ground locations for Observer Wards near towers. 
where they're not actually in range of a sentry ward on the towers. And if you're ever going to play support, I highly recommend taking some time to find those locations. Uh, this is a video about watching people drown in the river Styx. There goes TA. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about my favorite ward placements. Maybe if I play support someday, I will do that. <laughs> I say as I'm arguably playing a support morphling. Nah, I'm not support. This is a Chemrage tower push and build. The team is here. The river is flowing. Looks like the time to get in there. I totally whiff on my call, but it doesn't matter. That river does very mean, nasty, awful, terrible, bad things to the other team. At least the Terror Blade. Our Alk has already gone down. They try to chase the Doom. I don't know about chasing Doom. That's just... They both eat most of their health and damage running through the river chasing him. When I say the river, I'm not talking about this river across the middle of the map. Although that is traditionally the river. And, uh, I'm talking about this river of spirits flowing around Doom. Which Pudge very nearly drowns in. If not for PL blocking for him. Yeah, I'm just hanging out, chemraging down the tower. While these guys pressure the wave forward. I feel like that's something I can do useful in this game. Hey look, I'm not absolutely last place in net worth anymore. How nice. Io is catching up also. Moved up to third place. Very nice. He's, uh, you know, down here jungling while we push their tier twos. I feel like there's an argument to be made. It would have been nice if he was with us. So we have Io picking up an eagle song and then going for treads. I'm so confused. Meanwhile, Doom is like, I've had some good fights top. I'm going to hang out top. Seems good. EA steps into the river for a second and her health bar just disappears. Oracle appears to save her. Axe goes behind a T2 and dies immediately. Doom hangs out in the triangle and does a little better. I get the taunt onto the Terror Blade, so T drowns in the river. PL wants to push in, but the river is too scary. I am wondering where the creep wave is, so I head over to mid to uh, bring it on up. I'm also out of mana, so can't really help too much at this point. Um, I decided to grab a blink at this point in this game because I kind of figured blinking onto people instead of waveforming onto them is just faster and would make landing berserkers call a little bit more of a sure thing. And then I could waveform out and just drag people toward the team. It ended up not really working out particularly well, but it seemed like it would be fun to definitely. Uh, yeah, that's one of the times it didn't work out because I didn't have any mana for the waveform. I tried though. Pudge drowns in the river. And we secure the space at Triangle. Keep pressuring their key to. Meanwhile, Doom says, I don't need a team or creeps. I'll just send the river flowing onto high grounds. And I'm going to say Doom gets a double kill. Axe, uh, Axe got that second kill, technically, but we all know it was Doom. Uh, meanwhile, I switch over to bottom. I've got enough gold for a chem rage. I feel like the enemy team is either dead or pinned in their base. Now, this actually would have been a good opportunity for them to come after me. The rest of my team is mid. I go unharassed and bring down the bottom tier 2. Meanwhile, Doom is still just chilling mid. 
outside the base, but there he is. So, Doom finally goes home. He's got a heart. I like it. Very important to not be dead. He is going for a Mantis style. Okay, cool. Uh, I hope we get to see if or how this works out. We'll have to keep an eye on how that works out. Io, I assume... I assume nothing. I don't know what he's doing. Why does he have this? He's got... Yasha and Kaya queued up. But also just... What is he? Okay, there it is. He got the items for a butterfly. So I guess he wants the evasion? I don't... I don't know why he's going butterfly on this build. Maybe he just wants the attack speed? Go with the Whitmer for more chain lightnings? I don't... I don't really get what's going on here. I feel like he desperately needs mana. Maybe he could have gotten the scatty for us so he could slow for the Doom? I don't I don't know. I don't understand. Alright, so Doom does have Manta style up. I'll want to see if Manta Illusions also get uh, spirits. I didn't see what he used to conjure that set of illusions. But the Manta just popped off cooldown? Okay, so that must have been Manta. I'm actually going to back it up and just keep an eye on Doom for a second. I just want to see if that's what I think it is. That's a conjure image. And that was Manta. And they all get illusions. Wow, okay. So, yes, indeed, Manta does work. Very cool. Okay. So, Doom continues this push top. Pretty consistently at three illusions with Conjure, and then he can add another two with Doppelganger or Manta style now. He's not quite juxtaposed, but he's quite dead. Uh, I knew he was here, so I tried to set up this fight for him, but he showed up a little late for me. So I go down early. Finally, our gold advantage has become pretty substantial. We are now ahead in kills. Not like super far up. Like, this could still go either way in principle. But oh man, that is a thick river. It just burns down the other team. Fudge and TA both go down. But alas, no more from here. I end up just kind of hanging out low for a minute. Very nice hook. Pulls Alkin. Doom takes the opportunity to jump. And the river flows over PL and Terrorblade, who buys back and tries to hook Doom into the fountain. Doesn't quite get it. It is a very strung out Doom. Makes for a nice oval sticks instead of a river around him. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a, a jump call onto the Terror Blade. Gives Doom all the time he needs. There, Doom is with the Doppelganger. Gets an immediate double kill after already having secured that kill on Terror Blade. The illusions wear off. Now there are only three of him. But with me here, we're uh, starting to demolish towers. It's funny, I'm also going for strength just to not die. But with Gem Rage, I can really bring down towers. Couldn't quite get to Pudge that time for the pull. But Doom uh, is just hanging out outside of their fountain now, and they can't leave. We have secured the top racks. Io is farming bottom. Got his Kaya. Where's that going? Saw him all. I don't know what he was aiming for. Anyway, Doom and I just uh, kind of cleaning house. Waiting for the other team to respawn. Looks like they uh, may have become demoralized. Pio appears to be standing in fountain. As does TA. I 
go for the blink call, but that's a big old whiff. Since I didn't grab anybody, I go back and just fill in buildings. I get hooked and silenced, so I back out. I want to finish off this Rex anyway. Nice Ice Blast. Meanwhile, Doom just kind of runs around over here. And Pudge is the next to drown in the River of Spirits. Hook is a whiff. I'm a little low. It's time for me to skedaddle. But uh, somebody came out to get me low, and Doom punishes them for it. That's the TA down. One more hero drowning in the river. I pop my chem rage so I can farm. Doom gets pulled by a very nice hook, but it just hits that doppelganger button. He's perfectly safe. And the Terrorblade very wisely backs off. I was hunting for another, another jump call right there. I actually just blink in there to finish my strength blink. But at this point, items don't really matter anymore. We are wailing on their ancient, and they are staying in base. few of us mess with them in their fountain, but Doom is happy with this game and decides to just keep wailing on the Ancient. That is going to be GG. Great oval sticks orbiting around Doom as the game ends. If you made it to the end of the game, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to take a look at the scoreboard and talk about items a bit. If you want to see that, uh, the extended version of this video will be on Patreon, so find me there. It's not very expensive. A dollar a month gets you all the content, so uh, yeah, check that out. There's also merchandise, and there's also my eternal gratitude. Um, if you don't want to do that, that's fine. No guilt trip or anything. Uh, just hit that like button. That would really uh, help me out. All right. Um, catch me live Tuesdays and Thursday nights streaming. And for now, good luck, have fun, and don't die.